It appears that humanity has researched the solar system in great depth, though not entirely. The planets have all been identified for a long time, rovers have been wandering on Mars for a while, comets and asteroids have virtually all been recognized, and even the soil from one of them has been removed and transported to Earth for investigation. However, this is where the scientists were taken aback. Our entire solar system, including the far-off Oort cloud, which is a light year away from the Sun, appears to be engulfed in a big bubble. It has a radius of 1,000 light years. What's more amazing is that our Sun is nearly in the middle of this bubble. Do we truly live in a giant bubble? And how does our solar system work in this case? Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 launched less than a month apart from Cape Canaveral in 1977. By the way, Voyager 2 came out first. However, due to its altered travel path, it arrived at the edge of the solar system six years later than its companion. A peculiar anomaly was discovered by both devices. The density of space rises as you walk away from the Sun. Although interstellar space is commonly thought to be a vacuum, this is not totally accurate. Even if matter has a very low density, it nevertheless exists. The solar wind has an average density of protons and electrons of 3 to 10 particles per cubic centimeter in the solar system, but it decreases as one gets further away from the Sun. The solar system's edge has the lowest density of space. The heliopause is the name for this boundary. The solar wind, the flow of charged particles emitted by the Sun, or in other words, solar plasma, slows to a halt on it. The heliosphere is the space between the Sun and the heliopause. This is a bubble in which all of the planets of the solar system are contained. The density of protons and electrons at this limit is 0.002 particles per cubic meter. The density of particles behind the heliopause, that is, in interstellar space, should be 0.037 particles per cubic centimeter, according to calculations. The density outside the solar system, at a distance of 119.7 astronomical units or 17.9 billion kilometers from the Sun, was 0.039 particles per cubic centimeter, according to the Voyager 2 instruments. This was practically identical to the calculations. The weirdness began when the density was 0.12 particles per cubic centimeter at a distance of 124.2 astronomical units or 18.5 billion kilometers. Why is the population density rising? We'll get to that later, but for now, let's talk about another bubble, much larger than the heliosphere, so you can appreciate the cosmos' wisdom in packing us down into two bubbles at once and understanding the relationship between them. The images of deep space give the impression that it is completely covered in clouds of interstellar dust and brilliant gas. However, scientists began to notice that the galactic space around the Sun differed from this depiction in the 1970s and 1980s of the previous century. The solar system appeared to be suspended in space. Scientists at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics confirmed this year that we do, in fact, live in an empty space. They performed the most complicated computer simulations possible, reconstructing space and time in three dimensions. The Sun and Earth are almost in the center of a gigantic bubble with a diameter of 1,000 light years, which scientists call the local bubble, according to the study. It began to form around 14 million years ago, according to estimations. About 15 galaxies must erupt over several million years to do this. With the pressure of the light, this succession of explosions pushed the interstellar gas outward, forming a bubble-like structure with a thick surface at the border. And the bubble is still growing in size. According to data acquired by the European Space Agency's Gaia Space Observatory, the bubble was expanding at around 60 miles per second when it initially appeared. The bubble is still expanding at a rate of 4 miles per second. Seven star formation zones, dense molecular clouds where stars form, were discovered on its surface. The process of star creation takes place all over the surface of the local bubble, which is one of many in the galaxy. As a result, it's possible that other stars, even planets, exist in their own local bubbles, much like us. Surprisingly, the Sun was not always the center of our planet. The Sun was around 1,000 light years away from the area when these cataclysmic explosions happened. However, as astrophysicist Drew Alves of the University of Vienna noted, the Sun approached the core of the bubble around 5 million years ago as it orbited the galaxy center. This is in line with other researchers' estimates of radioactive iron isotope deposits from a supernova in the Earth's crust. The researchers believe the Milky Way contains many more star formation bubbles. 
Kwon her statement. CFA research author and astronomer Alyssa Goodman, who founded GLUE, says that the sun would not be towards the center of a gigantic bubble if they weren't distributed all over the place. She explained, The local bubble is exactly the local bubble we are in right now. We believe the sun has had many super bubbles throughout its lifetime. The cosmos was compared to Swiss cheese by the physicist. Supernova explosions puncture holes in the cosmos, and new stars are forming on the edges of the holes made by dying stars. More cosmic bubbles will be mapped in order to provide a complete 3D depiction of their shape, position, and size. Astronomers can piece together how these bubbles work as nurseries for stars, how the bubbles interact with one another, and how galaxies like the Milky Way have developed through time by mapping out where the bubbles reside over the immense expanse of space. The structure of the solar system after the opening of the local bubble looks like this. The Sun is at the center, and eight planets orbit it. Neptune is the last one, at a distance of 4.45 billion kilometers or 30 astronomical units. That is, 30 times the distance between Earth and the Sun. The Kuiper Belt, which lies behind Neptune, is a circle of tiny celestial bodies, the most renowned of which is Pluto, which has long been regarded as a planet. The Kuiper Belt is about 55 astronomical units across. There is also a heliopause at a distance of 125 to 135 astronomical units, which we have already discussed. Now consider why the density begins to rise at the boundary. It's because solar plasma and interstellar plasma collide here. Imagine two cosmic speed streams meeting head-on. Of course, the density increases near the site of impact. It's like being stuck in a traffic gridlock, a tangle of particles. The Oort Cloud, a spherical cloud of ice objects up to a trillion that acts as a source of long-period comets, expands behind this knot at a distance of 0.75 to 1.5 light-years. The interstellar wind has already taken over, but the Sun's gravitational field is still holding bodies on its grip. Many of our viewers may wonder, well, we live in a bubble that is enormous by worldly standards. Even with a local and heliosphere bubble, what's the big deal? What impact does it have on our lives? We can claim unequivocally that the Earth is safely protected from high-energy cosmic particles streaming from the heart of the galaxy thanks to the traffic jam that is created on its boundary, the heliosphere. The local bubble is next. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, has long been known to have the shape of a spiral disk. Several spirals radiate from its center, known as arms by astronomers. Our Sun is approximately midway between the Sagittarius and Perseus arms right now and our Sun circles around the galactic center. It rotates once every 200 million years. This is what we call a galactic year. Since the appearance of man, only 0.0008 of this year is gone. The Sun and its planets pass through not only bubbles, but also interstellar gas accumulations, during which the density of matter in space surged hundreds of times. Using the most recent model of the Milky Way, astronomer Miroslav Filipolik investigated what happened on Earth when the Sun passed the galactic arms, where the density of interstellar space is significantly higher. The moment the Sun crossed the spiral arms and five known mass extinction events, 415, 322, 300, 145, and 33 million years ago have been linked. As a result, we might conclude that the Sun is presently in a calm harbor, ideal for all living things. And we can claim that mankind is extremely fortunate to have appeared on Earth as a species before the Sun entered the local bubble. Or are these two occurrences, the appearance of man and the presence of the Sun in the safe sanctuary, a local bubble, somehow linked? Science knows nothing about it, not yet at least. However, we can be certain that the bright sky above our heads is owing to the fact that we are literally in a vacuum, the local bubble. Many stars would be invisible if the space surrounding us was denser. And who knows if we would know as much about space and the structure of our universe if we were literally blind. And we may say that the local bubble is nothing more than a gift to humanity, which has entered the space age and is already attempting to reach the stars. The greatest threat to an interstellar vehicle traveling at subluminal speeds is dust particles, which will simply grind the ship to powder upon encounters. Even speculative designs for such ships include a frontal shield. But now it appears that the cosmos has looked after us. It has cleared the dust from around the sun and, as it were, says, Guys, let's go. The way to Alpha Centauri and Tau Ceti is now clear. Keep an eye out for updates to keep up with humanity's greatest achievements. Thank you for taking the time to watch.